day, me say day, me say day, me say day, oh. Winona and Catherine, they come home. Jen, Jenna Ortega, joins the cast at the Dietz's home. But they killed off Jeffrey Jones. Google it, kids, you will regret it. Michael Keaton returns as a demon. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, and Beetlejuice! What the fuck? Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice is a sequel to the 1988 film directed by Tim Burton. And once again, Tim Burton steps into the director's chair, which is a really bad idea. You probably should sit in the director's chair. You try to stand it. You're going to be confused. It's not a hammock. I want somebody in the worst way, and that's staying up in a hammock. And that's Monica Bellucci. She's in this. And my, oh my, me, oh my, down on the Italian bayou that I don't think they actually have in Italy, Monica Bellucci looks Fucking incredible. Good God. What an Italian goddess. She has looked incredible for decades. Seriously, she's absolutely astonishing. Her look was clearly inspired by Sally from Nightmare Before Christmas that Tim Burton helped produce. He did not actually direct that, just for those that still don't remember that. So, yes, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. 36 years after the 1988 original came out, spending years, I imagine, in development hell. Tim Burton has had quite the eclectic career, and Michael Keaton, at least one of his most iconic roles, this in Batman, I mean, <clears throat> maybe a couple of, I always am partial to, you know, Desperate Measures, just because he's like the lone fucking highlight, even though that movie is by no means good, or well written or anything, but Michael Keaton returns as the ghost with the most, the man that just wanted to marry Lydia Dietz, despite the fact that in the original... She was underage. Speaking of which, Jeffrey Jones, the one that played the dad, is no longer in this, even though they reference his death in this particular movie. <laughs> but if you haven't seen the first Beetlejuice, you're going to be kind of lost on this one. I mean, there are things that you won't necessarily need to, you know, have known to follow this movie, but there are so many Easter eggs and everything that if you were going to see the sequel before seeing the original, that's a little bit weird. I can understand with Mad Max, you know, or Fury Road of Mad Max Saga, and then Furiosa of Mad Max Saga, and just doing that. But nevertheless, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, was written by three people. Three people wrote this. I do want to talk first about how great the sets are before I talk about the writers, the sets, the creature designs, and the lively nature of the afterlife, and just, you know, the washed out feel, but also just the fact that Jenna Ortega is the perfect, perfect person to carry on the <clears throat> Lydia Dietz type, you know, persona that Winona Ryder encapsulated in the 1988 original. Let's go back to those writers. Alfred Goff, or Koff. So, never let, he did Shanghai Noon, Shanghai Nights, Spider-Man 2, Herbie Fully Loaded. He also did Mummy, Tomb of the Forbidden Kingdom, Dragon Emperor. I Am Number 4, You, and also Smallville. Remember Allison Mack? Remember, remember the, remember the, you know, the girl in that. Remember her actually causing a whole bunch of issues by getting involved in that cult. No cults in this one, except the cult that seemed to worship Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, to the point that I expect this movie to have a massive, massive weekend. But let's get back to the writers. This review is kind of all over the place because I have a lot of thoughts that I'm going to share. Miles Miller has done the same as Alfred. Maybe he's done a few different things. I don't know. According to IMDb, glimpsing over at that. There you go. Seth uh, Graham. Smith, he did Dark Shadows. Remember the movie version of Dark Shadows that had Johnny Depp and was not well received because it wasn't very fucking good? He also did Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. I prefer the one where he's looking for proper audio equipment in the future, Abraham Lincoln Mike Hunter. There you go. He also did Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. I wanted that to be better than it was. <clears throat> and also the Lego Batman movie. So as far as writing talent, I mean, that is a mixed fucking bag. Three people... <laughs> Three people, and a couple people involved in the story process. <laughs> no doubt Tim Burton put his creative touches and sprayed all his creative juices all over this film that basically picks up decades after the original, though there are a few questionable choices with a couple characters that make me question just how much time has actually passed. <clears throat> but we do have smartphones, we have stuff like that. Yes, Michael Keaton, all your favorites are returned. If Jeffrey Jones was one of your favorites, Seriously, guys, what the fuck? <laughs> we do have uh, new characters. Jenna Ortega. <clears throat> we have Willem Dafoe as Wolf Jackson. We have Justin Thoreau. Not Henry David Thoreau. <clears throat> he plays Rory. And we do have Arthur Conte as <clears throat> Jeremy Byrne Gorman. 
who I swear to God can make a living here and in the afterlife playing creepy characters. Great actor. Do not get me wrong. Danny DeVito is in this. And, again, the absolutely stunner that is Monica Bellucci. I mean, I... <laughs> There were a meet and greet. I, I swear to God, I would pay a fucking fortune just to say you seriously can, you know, just captivate anybody. No, no she's seriously that fucking gorgeous. I mean, she's going to be 60 this year, and she looks amazing. She doesn't look like she's aged a day since Brotherhood of the Wolf, which came out over 20 years ago. So, yeah, basically, we have the relationship between Winona Ryder and Jenna Ortega as Lydia and Astrid. <clears throat> Um, Jenna Ortega, you know, misses her dad. She um, ends up, you know, going through some stuff once they go back to the old Dietz home to put Jeffrey Jones's character to rest. <laughs> That's how I'm going to remember him because his character name is not that important. I want to keep mentioning his name so people know what he did. And from there, <clears throat> well, things have not necessarily changed in the house. The old model that had Beetlejuice uh, in there is still there. And from there, yeah, we have a Beetlejuice movie. And Beetlejuice, you know, when he when Michael Keaton appears, he's able to sink his teeth into the role. If you thought his screen time was limited in the first one, me oh my, down on the Afterlife bio, you have not seen anything yet because you don't get to see him for a lot of the movie. So, yeah, I'm just going to get into it right now. I liked the first one, <clears throat> didn't love it, loved the sets, but it had life and energy and enthusiasm. And depending on how you felt about that one, that's going to dictate how you felt about this. At least mostly. Didn't like it. Didn't really like it one damn bit, in all honesty. It felt manufactured, soulless, and it felt, quite frankly, very boring. I was actually very surprised by how disjointed, how busy this was, but also how stretched out it felt. Like, they, they didn't give any scenes a chance to breathe. And yes, have energy, have life, have things going on. I understand that. But Willem Dafoe's character was unnecessary. Willem Dafoe, terrific fucking actor. Kinds of kindness, poor things, two recent roles. Inside, fuck inside, even though he was uh, not all that bad. But the movie was absolute dog shit, complete fucking dog shit. It was Willem Dafoe doing a one-act play. Which sounds like a good idea until you realize that the movie has absolutely nothing to say. <laughs> so, yeah, $100 million budget was allotted, and they spent a lot of it on the sets. And there are Easter eggs and callbacks. There are the sandworms. There are the various things, you know, <clears throat> with the shrunken head people. And Michael Keaton, when he is on screen, is able to turn it up and turn it loose. Turn it loose. Turn it loose. The juice is going over. Yeah, Michael Keaton's juice is going all over you. He's got to be in his 70s. Gross. Whatever. I mean, the man has, has aged pretty well and continues to get good roles. Also, Tim Burton has had uh, quite the interesting filmography, though, if you check him out. I did recently uh, rewatch, you know, well, uh, recently, I mean, like, you know, when I saw Wonka last year, I decided to watch the original Willy Wonka and then Tim Burton's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which, you know, wasn't all that great. Tim Burton is a very visually impressive filmmaker and can do some good stuff. He's not exactly a picture-perfect guy. He doesn't exactly understand how to have a cohesive narrative. There's, there are things that work in this movie, but there are characters that just, they'll drop out. Like one character, Monica Bellucci's character is in for a little bit, drops out completely. Beetlejuice, when he's on, is great, but then he'll drop out. It's more about the relationship between Lydia and you know um, Astrid, which is fine, but the writing is not up to snuff, and the comedy just doesn't hit. There are a few moments that do work, but by and large, for something that is a comedy, comedy with some horror elements mixed in, and just an overall sense of fun, it is lacking that sense of fun. It is actually getting to the point where I'm starting to question if legacy sequels can be done right, but then Top Gun Maverick came out a couple years ago. Other ones have come out. Legacy sequels or reboots like Twisters. This is better than Twisters. Do not misunderstand me. Twisters was absolute dog shit. Check out my review of that. But yeah, the dead, the living, can they coexist? Well, I'm convinced that the writers were probably legally dead when they wrote this because I can't understand how anybody thought this dialogue was a good idea. Yes, there are callbacks. Yes, there are some fun moments. But then there are moments where I think they tried to have fun, <laughs> especially later in the movie, that just don't work. When they finally introduced Beetlejuice in the first one, yes, they pulled back from it, but they at least kept him in the background. This is more just about Lydia dealing with past trauma. And yes, that could be a fine story. You gotta turn it up and you gotta have some fun. And it's just, 
soulless. It's soulless and manufactured. I really don't know any other way to explain it. They're, you know, Michael Keaton. It, Michael Keaton has like a bunch of shrunken head people working for him doing, you know, the call stuff and everything, trying to get ghosts out of the house. And also the obvious plot twist, and there's one particular subplot involving Jenna Ortega where I'm just like, okay, that, I mean, yeah, we all saw that coming. That's kind of a lame excuse, so it also felt like <clears throat> there was an attempt to have emotional depth right after that part happened that just didn't hit. It felt like, okay, we have to include this character. Okay, we have to include this other character. We have to do these things, but we don't have any way <clears throat> to tie it together without just feeling like, boom, 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 we're having a checklist, and that's what this movie felt like. It felt like a checklist. So check it out in theaters if you want. It's going to make a fuck ton of money, at least in the first week, possibly the second week. I gotta be honest, though, <clears throat> if he, more people feel like I do, this thing is probably gonna drop pretty goddamn fast. It'll probably be on streaming within the next, oh, I don't know, couple months. Maybe it'll be on <clears throat> streaming, maybe it'll make a fuck ton of money, they'll drop it on streaming just in time for Halloween. I hope, I was hoping that maybe this would be good and we could get a third one, but you know, after this, I don't really want to see a third one. This movie almost felt unnecessary. It felt like it was retreading stuff and any of the new stuff it tried just didn't work. Getting into spoilers, by the way. Three, two, one, and spoilers. So, um, <clears throat> Monica Bellucci's character, Dolores, is Beetlejuice's ex-wife. <clears throat> we get a backstory where he tells it either in Spanish or French or whatever the fuck language that was. Romanian, possibly. I think it was Romanian. Where he was a grave robber. <clears throat> he met Dolores. And it turns out Dolores, Dolores was part of a soul-sucking cult. There is a point where Danny DeVito, a little bit earlier, is a janitor. He gets the soul sucked out of him and gets shrunk down. More than Danny DeVito already is. Let me just say, Monica Bellucci's sucking the life out of me. There are worse ways to go, folks. There are worse ways to go. Yes, maybe I will confess my love for Monica Bellucci. Shut up. She looks great. She, when she's allowed to actually act, I'm not saying she's the most amazing, you know, Oscar-worthy actress, but she is good, and sometimes it feels like they just rely on her looking beautiful and not giving her much to do. She is a talented actress. She's been doing great stuff for a number of years. <clears throat> Brotherhood of the Wolf, in my opinion, is one of her best roles. Not just because she runs a house of, or she's the best in a house of ill repute and is in nice outfits and everything. Not just because of that. No, seriously, she actually did really good in that. <clears throat> but she does a couple things. She sucks the soul out of Dane DeVito. She sucks the soul out of another person. And then that's it. That's it. We don't see her for a while. And then... We're focused on Lydia and Astrid. Astrid lost her dad when he went and did an expedition um, in the Amazon trying to save the rainforest and got a Boeing accident. He got killed by piranhas. We see a little later he's got piranhas sticking on him. More on that in a bit. <clears throat> Lydia's traumatized by all the stuff that went, that has been going on because of Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Oh no, he's going to come up. Except I, I think actually summoning Beetlejuice to get rid of the sequel might have actually been a better idea. Again, I hate saying this. I hate saying this because I wanted this to be good. Astrid <clears throat> has a tense relationship with her mother. Has a tense relationship with her grandmother, played by Catherine O'Hara. And it's great that Catherine O'Hara's back in this. Catherine O'Hara, what a fucking talent. What a layered career. Voiced Sally in Nightmare Before Christmas. <clears throat> you know, Kevin! All that. She is great. Was in the original Beatles. She is very, very good. And she's reduced to just basically being the art person doing this and... Because you had the art um, <clears throat> love in the first one. We do see the art uh, sculpture um, <clears throat> that she had in the first movie, still at the house. And they expand on the town a little bit more, but for all the sets, you know, in the real world, feeling alive in the first one, this felt more like it was just pieces, pieces. At least the afterlife parts kind of had a nice, cool feel about them. And there were some nice gore effects, but <clears throat> this felt like Tim Burton almost neutered. Like, Tim Burton felt like he had to do this, but either he wasn't given the creative uh, freedom to do stuff, <clears throat> or he just doesn't fucking have it anymore. It's likely the latter. And I was excited for this, once again. So, um, <clears throat> Astrid ends up wrecking her bike <clears throat> at, uh, at uh, the foot of a tree, runs through a fence, sees a kid named Jeremy, <clears throat> played by Arthur Conte, who's actually very good. He's a very good actor. Very good young actor. He tries in this. 
And they, you know, end up having a bit of a romance. It turns into a bad romance. Na, 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 Those aren't the lyrics. But nevertheless, he invites her over for Halloween. Rory, meanwhile, Justin Throw, wants to marry Winona Ryder. Don't get me wrong. Winona Ryder still looks fucking incredible. Despite the fact that pretty much from, what about, I'd say Girl Interrupted, she... Well, I mean, even Little Women, because Little Women, she was actually pretty good in that. But from Girl Interrupted onwards, she's just had this really nice, you know, ethereal look about her, I guess, really, I should say. She's had her troubles, but she's a very good actress. I was very thrilled for her to be in this. She and Rory run, like, a show about the Paranormal Coke Ghost House because Lydia can see ghosts because that's what stuff that traumatized her. Um... <clears throat> In the first one, because she could see ghosts. She could see the ghosts of Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis, who are nowhere near this. To be fair with the stuff going on with Alec Baldwin, I understand. But Gina Davis, you could have had Gina Davis in there, but nope, those ghosts moved on. It's fine. Don't worry. But Rory wants to marry her. It turns out a little bit later that Rory wanted to marry her just strictly for money. That's revealed later on. <laughs> Lydia summons Beetlejuice because it turns out that Jeremy is actually dead. And Jeremy has the um, handbook for the recently deceased, creates a doorway, and has Jenna Ortega's Astrid say something. And that basically is him wanting to get his life back <clears throat> and trade her life for his. So he can go back, but, Je but Jenna Ortega can't. And the reason is because Jeremy was a naughty boy and murdered his parents. And that's something that Jane Butterfield, by the way, played by an actress who would have been six when the first one came out. I'm all for having characters, <clears throat> you know, maybe not, maybe you can't have the original. Maybe the actress that played the original Jane Butterfield either asked for too, money, too much money, doesn't want to do acting, or is dead. I don't really know. It was 36 years ago. But that being said, you couldn't have found some, whatever, whatever. Nothing against the actress, but just she would have been fucking six. She would have been six. <laughs> she wouldn't have been an adult. She wouldn't have been around Catherine O'Hara's age. Catherine O'Hara still looks good. Still has that star quality about her. But her character is there. She was a realtor, by the way, that was trying to sell off the house before. All this stuff's going on. <clears throat> Catherine O'Hara tries to do this seance thing to put Jeffrey Jones' soul at peace. I wish they had actually killed off the man for what he did. Very naughty things. Things that no um, adult should do and be able to get away with. So, nevertheless... <clears throat> She's doing something, she has these snakes out, and then these snakes bite her, and they're not defanged or devenomized, and she dies, and she ends up in the underworld. Lydia summons Beetlejuice to basically get Astrid back. She signs a contract saying she will marry him, but please help get the daughter back. So, because all the, da -da, you know, all this stuff's going on, uh, Monica Bellucci finally appears, and you notice I haven't mentioned Willem Dafoe's character, because he's like some action star with half his brain hanging out. They didn't have to really add any prosthetics to his face, because he just looks like that. That's mean. Willem Dafoe has a very unique face, but they didn't have to add anything and pour things. I'm sorry, Willem Dafoe seems like a nice man, but honestly, nevertheless, Willem Dafoe's character really feels muted. There are some <clears throat> cops that almost look like they're from Chips, and then the shrunken head guys <clears throat> end up getting out in the real world, where Byrne Gordman sees them, he's a pastor, and um, Justin Thoreau's character sees them, and a lot of this should be more fun, and it's not fun. It's just not fun at all. And then Lydia and Beetlejuice basically end up eventually getting to the Soul Train. Just before that, Jeremy ends up getting his, um, is going to get his passport stamped. He got uh, Jenna Ortega to give her soul away. Okay. All right, dick move, but fine. If they had maybe cut out Willem Dafoe's character and given more screen time to this stuff and tightened things up, this might have worked. But then she is being pulled towards the soul train, sees her dad. Her dad's working at the train station. And then they're just going along. Jeremy is about to get his passport stamped to go back to the real world. But then Beetlejuice suddenly is the guy and says, you're shit out of luck. And... Like, burn in hell, fucker, or something like that. They got away with one fuck and one shit. And <clears throat> Jeremy gets sent to hell, and that was within ten minutes, maybe. It might have even been eight. That that was a quick subplot. That It was a way to get Jenna Ortega <clears throat> to, you know, understand her mother, and I get that, but it's just, again, Monica Bellucci finally shows up. 
Because she wants Beetlejuice's soul. She wants to suck it out of him again. I fucking volunteer as goddamn tribute. I'm fine. I'm totally fine. But never, if there are worse ways to go again. <clears throat> so, they get back to the real world. Beetlejuice wants to marry Lydia. Rory is disappointed with this. <clears throat> Rory confesses he just wanted to marry her for money. Rory ends up basically <clears throat> in a bad place. Now, right before that, the dad rescues Lydia and Astrid <clears throat> from the sandworm that was from the first one. Great practical effects again. Great creature effects. I just wish they were in a better movie. <clears throat> but he shares a little bit. We made a really good kid. But you two need each other, all that kind of stuff. And that is within one minute. We are done with that. Not giving anything a chance to breathe. <clears throat> and then finally, and then finally, the marriage is about to happen. And then guess what? Guess what happens, folks? That contract is null and void. <clears throat> because it turns out that Beetlejuice brought a living person into the uh, under um, into the afterlife, the underworld, and that null and voids the contract. Right before this, Monica Bellucci shows up, wants um, <clears throat> Beetlejuice's soul, but then gets eaten by the sandworm. So that's how you deal with Monica Bellucci's character. I mean, come on. Getting a chance to eat Monica Bellucci. Who, who would want... Never mind. Moving on. It, it's fine. It, it's fine. But then Beetlejuice <clears throat> ends up getting his name said, and he's sent away. And then there are these dreams. <clears throat> because one scene I forgot to mention was a little bit earlier when Rory and Lydia got summoned. And then Beetlejuice mentions, oh, I'm just waiting <clears throat> on my son or whatever, my son to be born. And then Lydia suddenly ends up pregnant, ends up giving birth to a kid. Obviously, this is all just stuff in her head. But there's this little baby Beetlejuice biting, <clears throat> they bust out and starts biting on her ankles and everything, a little ankle biter, and then runs away. So then we have Lydia and we have Astrid going through a few things. We have um, Lydia um, having some kind of nightmare because her because Astrid suddenly ha gives birth to the baby Beetlejuice that kills one of the doctors and that kind of stuff. And then uh, Lydia has a, uh, wakes up from the nightmare and um, <clears throat> Beetlejuice says, "I'm." <laughs> it's like, oh, I just had the weirdest dream. And then she wakes up again, and no, everything's fine. So she's still haunted by him, but he's gone. Maybe. Kind of. And I just... Look, there were parts that could have worked. I'm so disappointed in this. I'm so fucking disappointed. F, I'm sorry. It's not good. This is one of the most disappointing fucking movies of the year. Nevertheless, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Wrinklin. I'll see you soon.